Um, if I was giving you an overview of the, the research that we're planning to undertake, it's really to try and link together the information that's held in a whole range of different administrative databases about patients with cancer at the end of their life. So we know that the care that's delivered to patients will be recorded uh, in a whole variety of different places. Information about what happens to them when they're in hospital, when they're seen in outpatients, um, possibly when they're seen in, in the general practitioners. What we want to do with our research is actually to try and link the different sheets of that record together for an individual. So we can try and trace the pathway in the last year of their life for patients who've got blood or bowel cancer. And by doing that, we want to try and get a better picture of the way in which they experience care over that time, and also try and provide some understanding for the planners and the commissioners of care for patients at the end of their life, exactly what's happening to patients and some of the different pathways through which they, they follow. One of the big differences between those two different cancers, the bowel and the blood cancers, is that we do know that patients with blood cancers, cancers like leukaemia and lymphoma, are much more likely to die in a hospital bed uh, than patients with other sorts of cancer. So although there's an awful lot of different clinical and personal choices that, that impinge on where an individual dies, uh, one of the things we'll be looking at is what pathways have patients followed through those medical records uh, as they come to that period of their life and to see if there are differences between different groups. What we hope through the research in terms of the way in which it can improve care for, for patients at the end of life or for their carers and families is that by understanding the patterns, the way in which that care is currently delivered, we've got a much better starting place for planning and commissioning care for patients in the future and also hopefully give people a, a chance to develop some of the tools they may want to have to monitor and compare the quality of care being delivered in different parts, different localities, for different treatments or for different ages. So those sorts of information have a, a real bearing on other parts of care for cancer patients. We look at survival rates, we look at differences in treatment. We want to see if by linking records together we can find meaningful and helpful pieces of information that may help planners compare the quality of care delivered in different locations. I think end-of-life care research and the funding for it is really important because although it's not the only source of, of information for change, research evidence is usually the best basis for delivering effective change. It's not the only stimulus, it's not the only way of guiding what people should do in terms of changing their practice, but when you've got the basis of valid, well-conducted research studies, you have a greater confidence, a greater capacity to understand and predict what will happen when you make changes. I think that on its own is a really important contribution that research makes to uh, the potential of delivery of better quality of care for patients at the end of their life.